And welcome to this edition of the Wonder Bird Podcast. I'm Brian. I'm Dave. And you can find us online at wonderberry.com. And I am D Wonderly on Twitter. Or I'm Brian Keysberry at anywhere the internet can be found. You can leave us questions on our Facebook page. Check for the link in the description. And also on our website, on the Reddit. Use Twitter hashtags that we probably won't check. Oh, I check the Twitter hashtags. They're yeah. silently empty, but I check them. Huh. Someday somebody will you use check those. them more often. Hopefully. Hashtag Wonderberry on Twitter. wonder if I could IFTTT uh, feed, like an email trigger. I'd look into that. Probably where I can just hit search <laughs> and search hashtag Wonderberry. Hashtag Wonderberry. Do it up. So how was your week? Oh, it wasn't too bad. Week was... Week was the week. Not really much happened eventful, other than catching up on a lot of BTS that I haven't uploaded yet. Yeah. Huh. That'll happen tomorrow for sure. Like three or four weeks worth. Nice. <laughs> It'll be good though. Yeah, I'll be caught up with that. Um, I'm recording a test for the other show that we talked about. Yes, that's a teaser. We, I'm doing. I would like to do a another scripted show that'll be weekly. So I've been making notes and writing the script and stuff. So hopefully, I can run a test for that. Run it by you, and if it looks good, then I'll probably release it as a teaser, and then. Start writing for that each week. So look out for another show coming out of Wonderbird. That'll be a, it'll be a YouTube exclusive. There we go. Nice. So subscribe to the YouTube channel. And you can get all the YouTube exclusive stuff that'll be coming out. <laughs> maybe, Should be good. Maybe some special 360 degree video versions of the podcast. Yeah, we're going to do specialty stuff. We've been playing around with a lot of fun stuff this last... Uh, last week and should be good a lot of really cool stuff that we can do should be good and crazy it was it was oh yeah the the couple of minutes that i rendered of the last one was hard to bounce back and forth between you and i talking um because i put myself directly 90 degrees to the right and you were 90 degrees to the left and so you the person watching the video is right in the middle and when i talk oh, nice. you nice and then when you talk, you go. <laughs> and you're oh, that's cool. So, so awkward, but it's neat. So, but it'll. <laughs> well, if you don't do it directly ninety degrees, but you just kind of separate a little bit where they could just turn their head back and forth, that could be a really cool addition for a for any VR headset or, you know, if you've got what what is it now? Well, there's cardboard. There's Samsung Galaxy VR. Uh, Google's coming out with Daydream. Yeah. Speaking of Google coming out with stuff, man, Google Assistant is beautiful. Is it? I you played with it yet? Not yet. It hasn't dropped. I got an update this oh, week. I have one of dude. those rare Android devices that like updates on a very regular basis, and I didn't get it. What do I got? You'll, you'll get it soon. What do it's, I got to do? Nothing. It, it, nothing. It, um, your Google. It's baked into the Google app, so it's not even an operating system. It's just added in. Just it replaces, replaces out the. Now. Yeah, pretty much. Dang. I do, um, open I do up like your. Now. Oh, oh I got open an up. Open up like uh, anything like browser, or whatever, and push and hold the the circle, the home button, and it should pop up assistant. Well, I got an update for my Google app. Oh, ho, 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 ho. there you go. Oh, it's it's kind of phenomenal. It flows. You can ask it contextual questions against itself, and it does really well. That's what it's kind of nice. I played with it a lot in Allo, and that was pretty awesome. Um, it's it's better than what it was in Allo. Nice. Which I didn't like Allo. Once they combine Allo and Duo and make it to Hangouts 2.0 and they add SMS, then I'll use it. Oh, once, oh, once they do. And if, I and if they, they allow. Did. 
No, once they do. And they'll add uh, functionality for it to connect to uh, the computer, where I can check my messages on the computer. Nice. Then I'll use it. Until then, I have no use reason to leave either Hangouts or Telegram. Yeah. I mean, Telegram's pretty awesome, but it's not... Ooh, there Telegram we go. is great for chatting. Come on, focus. There we go. Just got the Google Assistant on air. Nice. Live on air. There you go. Hi, I'm your Google Assistant. <laughs> I can help you find what you need and get things done. Oh, if you need help, just yeah, ask, yeah. what can you do? So, how can I help? Will you remind me to do all the things I forget to do? When do you want to be reminded? Anytime. <laughs> okay. Do you want to save this? <laughs> yes. Okay. Remind me to save. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, my life just got easier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So I saw that you got uh, interviewed this week. Yeah, um, I'm in the I'm in the podcast subreddit and saw yeah. saw somebody asked about doing an interview uh, for for a podcast project for a class. I was like, oh, yeah, sign me up. I'll do, I didn't even know what the interview was. I was like, ah, oh, I'll do it. And then it happened to be a subject that you were uh, somewhat familiar yeah, with. Yeah, I already knew a little bit. It's like, hey, cool. It's, uh, that was interesting. Good old, good old world of Linux and the year of the desktop. Insert any year after 2004 here. Yep. It's like, oh. Every time I hear that, I get a little sad inside. Well, the desktop isn't the end all end all as we've seen with with Linux. It's definitely dominates the market share through and through in every subject and category except Everywhere the desktop. Else. Yeah. Um which that was that was part of it. I'm like it's the desktop doesn't matter anymore anyways. <laughs> yeah. Well, it does to a certain extent, but the the groups that it matters to is the only groups that it matters to. Yep. It it for the typical everyday day in day out user, desktop doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. You can get you can get away with everything else for more power users or gamers. Obviously, you know if you if you're production if you're pretty much in in audio video production, gaming. Or actual coding outside of those four and maybe like scientific big stuff see i would even i would even remove coding from that now because there's oh you you can but there's no way that you can do some of like okay script coding yes i would agree with you i can do script coding on my thing mm -hmm. uh game coding um any any Unreal Engine coding, yeah. any of the other big stuff? That's true. No. Yeah, for, no, you, like, you, the, you still can't do that on on the on the other stuff. If, if the, the the majority of coding is, you know, web coding, you know, all you need is a Chromebook. But yeah, if we're doing yeah doing, doing heavier end stuff like the any sort of game coding, yeah, definitely need a desktop to power that. Yeah. And that's fine. I mean, it's still it still has its place. I I would be completely lost, but I do a lot of my stuff on my Chromebook. I have a Chromebook for a reason, and I do a lot of my stuff on my Chromebook for a reason. Mm -hmm. So they're nice. No, it's it's awesome, but a lot of people don't, you know, they they talk about Linux like it's a second-class citizen or they they think that what well, when is Linux going to be successful? Linux ships more devices than the other ones combined and that's when you factor in that android is built on the linux kernel yeah. whether or not you want to argue and argue the semantics of true open source or just open code or whatever Doesn't linux matter. is the backbone of every android device of every chromebook of every 
of all that. Yeah. It powers most of the internet. Yeah. Embedded stuff. If, like it's it, it's if you're looking phenomenally amazing at a website, the chances are that website's being held on a Linux computer somewhere. That's it's on Let a Linux see. server. Which doesn't count as a desktop because that's not a, a commercial home grade kind of use scenario. You know, and that's what everybody seems to shoot for is what am I going to have sitting on my desk at home? And that's, you know, Linux is kind of built for that, but it, Windows is way easier so, at it than Mac. I'm trying to see when this was released out, but ah, 10 March. Okay, so W3 Techs. Um kind of shows a technical overview and it's not a hundred percent accurate but it's roughly 66 to 33 unix based so that's all the linuxes and unix based servers over windows servers hmm. so two-thirds of the internet runs on linux Damn. or unix based what's the real difference there um, it's, it's, it's a different kernel. I mean, it's, it's like, it's like the difference between Mac and Mac OS of old and Mac OS today. It, there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of differences, but yeah. it's all kind of the same. It, it gets put under the same umbrella, but there are lots of differences between Unix and Linux itself. <laughs> I never really, never really studied the difference in those two. Uh, different, different kernels, different whatever. Hmm. So, how how does how does Android compare to Mac and Windows? Oh, for the uh, for the numbers. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Usage share of operating systems. Blah, 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 blah. So, for shipments, and this was in 2005. Uh, That's, ooh, that data Android, is way too old. Yeah, it's the only one that's on here. Wait, no. 2005? That was... I'm sorry, 2015. Oh, okay. My bad. So a year old. I was like, wait. So a 2015. Minute. Sorry. <laughs> that was, so at the end that was of two years before so the Android end of 2015. <laughs> <laughs> so all this information is from uh, Gartner. Okay. Uh, at the end of 2015, Android had shipped 1.3 billion devices, which is 54 percent of all devices shipped. iOS or Mac OS had shipped 297 million or 12.3 windows had shipped 283 million which is 11.7 and falling under the others category which i don't know what the heck is the others category probably, 520 million probably tizen um blackberry wasn't making phones that year were they Oh, ties in. The Rim still makes that stuff. They some stuff, I think. I wasn't sure when they they went on their hiatus. Which, by the way, they're back. New BlackBerry phones. Yes, I saw that. It was actually also nice. uh, Nokia is back. <laughs> the the Nokia, the old Nokia thirty one hundred series, or the three thousand series. Yeah, they're back. I I I was I was perplexed. Um, to say the least, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't watch any like hands-on videos of them, but I was like, I actually think I still have mine in a box in a closet over there. So, uh, 80% <laughs> of all the devices shipped was smartphones, mm -hmm. traditional PCs, more mobile designs and tablets are taking beatings this year, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's like Windows is saying that when or uh, Microsoft is saying that Windows 10 has hit 400 million computers, which is honestly kind of big. 
Well, it's it's going to be every Windows computer eventually. Yeah. Which makes me wonder why they even called it Windows 10. Oh, because they don't name things proper. <laughs> they're so they they're so fragmented. They they set the industry standard in fragmentation back in 1983. I have I have the graphic. Uh, to let's prove see it. here. Linux or Unix or Unix like. Uh, on the web. Yeah. 67 to 32 percent for last year linux is guest on mainframes is massive red hat has claimed is about 20 percent oh i'm sorry 37 percent of the uh the linux running on the web uh if you go down to the 500 fastest supercomputers um 2016 out of the top 500 there were zero Microsoft Windows supercomputers. 99.4% <laughs> was Linux and 0.6% was Unix. And that was the same way in the, for the performance share 2015 the system share was 100% Linux or Unix. Uh, last time there was a Windows anything was at 0.2% in 2014. 0.6% in 2014 for the performance share. Ooh, man. So Linux Linux is completely blasted through. Uh, let's see here. Going over to market share by category. Desktop, laptop, Linux is about 2% for Ubuntu, three point or 6.4% for Mac OS, and 91% Windows. Uh, smartphone tablets, 68% Android, 23% iOS. 1.2% Windows. Server web servers. Here we go. So this one's a little hard because Linux and then Unix and Unix like. So Mac OS gets bumped into the Unix and Unix like for servers. But even then, so Unix and Unix like would be AIX, FreeBSD, HPUX, and Mac OS. And that's still only 30% of the share. Windows is 33% of the share, and Linux, straight on Linux, so Debian, Ubuntu, CentOS, Red Hat, Enterprise, and Gen 2 was about 36%. 100% uh, is either Linux or Unix, like for supercomputers. Uh, the gaming consoles. So the PS, so Sony uses a Unix system. Mm -hmm. And then Nintendo uses an in-house operating system. So the way that breaks down is the in-house for like Wii, Wii U, 3DS, DS, et cetera, et cetera. They've got almost 50% of the market share for gaming consoles. Uh, 34% Unix, Unix, Unix or Unix-like, and about 16% for Windows Base, which is just the 360 and the one. Yeah. And then for embedded, uh, 29% is Android plus non other non-Android Linux for embedded stuff. Uh, 4.29% QNX, which is a Unix-based system. Uh, Windows holds 11.6 for WCE7, 13.5% for in-house custom, and then there's 41% of other. Hmm. So yeah, Linux runs the world. So for, for people to say that, that Linux doesn't matter because it's not on the desktop, the numbers show that Linux has completely won. 
Linux one operating system. There's just one category that it's kind of, well, two categories if you count <clears throat> gaming consoles, that it's kind of not ahead in. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's why my, my, like, not really argument, but my, my statement in the interview was it really is just lacking the commercial distribution for manufacturers. That's, yeah. that's all that, that's all that Microsoft has. It's all that Dell, Windows has. Dell does sell Ubuntu laptops. Yeah. And they're actually making money doing it. Where? They're doing and fairly well. Where do they advertise them? Because they don't. They don't. Um, not in the United States. Yeah. They do advertise them in other countries. Yeah. Um, but not in the United States. They, they, there's no use advertising them in the United States. Yeah. It's a waste of money. Unfortunately. So I wonder how long but, it's going to take for, um, like Android convertible tablets to start surpassing that even. I don't know. Um, the two in ones computers are becoming more and more popular. Uh, the surface tablets amazing. I, I think it won't be long before tablets move toward. You'll see less and less actual tablets, and you'll see more convertible tablets. Mm -hmm. You'll see some more stuff like the Surface, the Surface Book, uh, Chromebooks with removable, detachable keyboards. That's what you're, I think, going to see more so than um, tablets that that do that. Yeah, and even just <clears throat> what was that? I think the that's Pixel that's the C? future of tablets. Yeah, I think I think once phones hit right about where they're at now, which is six six and a half inches, I think that having a you know a seven inch tablet or uh, even a nine inch tablet, it's not that much more than what you can do on a phone, and anything that you'd want to do more that way would be better served from a, a two in one or a convertible with a detachable keyboard or something along those lines. And that'll be about nine to eleven inches, maybe even as big as thirteen. But I don't see them going any bigger than thirteen inches for those convertibles. They really don't need to. Um, I thought Asus had it right. A few years ago, they came out with a tablet or a phone. Was that the trans the transformer? No, I had one of those, and those were amazing. Um. I thought it was called a Zen book, but I think that's wrong. They 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 do have a Zen book. Yeah, they do, and I think that's their That's that's one that's, of their ultra book lines. Yeah. Um I'd love to have a Microsoft Surface book. Like to me, that would be that's would probably be my next laptop purchase. It'll be a Surface book with detachable keyboard. Those things are phenomenal. Pad phone. If the pad phone. So it was a phone. You you bought the phone, and then the phone there was there was an extra accessory you could buy, that was a tablet, and then you slid your phone into the tablet, and your phone actually powered the tablet, and then the tablet gave you extra battery life. And then on top of that, there was also a keyboard that you could set your tablet and phone in as a dock, which would give you... So, a... one thing that... Yeah, this is this is absolutely amazing. Yeah. So, one thing that, that Ubuntu is doing, which is kind of not quite along the same lines, but sort of, is... So, Ubuntu has been making uh, their own phones, the Ubuntu phone. Mm-hmm. And the idea is, is that you plug in through the USB to a monitor and you have a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse that you sync to it and it changes the screen up and it becomes your desktop. Yeah. So it's a full convergence, one device to do everything. Yeah, that's what the that's kind of what the pad phone did too. Yeah, that's what I was looking. That's why it reminded me of that. It was it was very yeah. very similar that way. That was kind of awesome. The original one that they came out with, so it had there was the phone, the tablet, and then the keyboard, and then there was also a pen stylus that yeah. was part of it. 
and that was also an external Bluetooth speaker and microphone. So if you were using, if you're using tablet mode or you're working on the computer, and you've got a phone call on your phone that was attached into the tablet, you would pick up your stylus and you had a little headset built into your stylus as <laughs> I was like, this is, oh, that's kind of cool. It's amazing. And why does this not exist? I need this. <laughs> like, why, it, can it you was, not buy it um it was only available in korea when that came out or maybe japan i don't remember but it wasn't oh. available here and i was so disappointed and then and then the asus did some some of the nexus things and i'm like oh let's do a nexus pad phone guys like that would just solve all the problems like whatever problem it is think of something later Boom, solved nice. it with the pad phone. That would be amazing. Like somebody needs to bring that back and make it a thing. I, I think I think it'll, so the stuff like that I think will become more as they get more as we see a bigger movement to a convergent system where you want one device to control everything instead of all the others, you'll see more stuff like that happening. Yeah. And I think it's 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 a great it's a great thing. Linux biggest problem its biggest problem in the desktop is also its biggest strength as a system, which is really weird, and that's fragmentation. Mm -hmm. the, the, the best thing about it is, is that you can tailor it to fit your needs. The worst thing about it is, is that it gets tailored to fit people's needs. And there isn't a unified... Ubuntu is trying very, diff very, very hard, and it gets a lot of flack for saying, no, this is what we're going to do, and we're going to stick to it. We have a plan, we have an idea, and we're going to just focus on this. But it's very difficult when, you know, you, you, you especially for a new person getting into Linux, is, okay, well, what, what desktop environment do you use? What do you mean? Well, you can go Ubuntu Unity, you can go KDE, you can go GNOME, you can go Cinnamon, you can go, you can go, you can go, you can go, and it just... Within 30 seconds, you're going, okay, what's the difference? Well, each one has its own unique look, has its own unique feel, does these things, does that thing. And it becomes very daunting right away when I just want to install something and have it work. And then because each of these groups have their own toolkits, have their own driver kits, so now software that was made for GNOME won't work on KDE. Stuff that won't work on KDE won't work on Cinnamon. And it it complicates what should be a simple system. You know, I've I've been an advocate, and I will always be an advocate for Linux. I don't use it anymore. I don't use Linux day to day. I have it in a VM, and I power it up, so I guess I do use it every day. But my primary operating system is no longer Linux, because... I was running, I found that the operating system was getting in the way of my work. Yep. And once that starts happening, you lose. And that's because while I love the ideals, I'm not going to sit here and try to be a purist. If something's going to work, I'm going to use it because at the end of the day, I have to get stuff done. Yeah. And that's, that's why I never switched. I got hooked on Reaper and there isn't, there isn't a Linux version of Reaper and tried tried running a desktop um with ubuntu running and then running reaper and wine but at that point yeah. it racked up so much latency that i couldn't go in and do feasible recordings i couldn't oh i couldn't do an overdub because it would yeah. everything was delayed by like a half a second and now I, the the nice thing about ubuntu having a very populous market share is is that companies can build toward Ubuntu and they have something that, that seems more professional and more has its shit together than a lot of the other ones. And so they build toward that. That's why we have a native steam client for Ubuntu. That's why we have native steam games that work there. That's why we have these things is because They've done, they've gone a long way of saying, we're setting it up this way. We're not going to change it. Here's the toolkits. Here's how to make it easy. They're, they're trying to reshape the way people outside of Linux and outside of the open source world look at Linux. And they're somewhat, 
they're somewhat gaining popularity. And it's working. It's working extraordinarily slow, but it's starting to work. Mm -hmm. And it's never a bad thing. You know, popular things. I don't think Reaper... Reaper isn't available on Ubuntu yet. Mm -hmm. But so many of the things that you never thought possible were. And it's it's been kind of fun to watch. I like... I like seeing more stuff go like gain support for Linux because in my head that says to me in the future I will run that on a remote server and be able to run that on whatever device I want. Oh, and one of the big jumps that I just noticed recently was the video editing program I use, DaVinci Resolve. Mm -hmm. Native native client for Linux. Nice. Which right. is a huge leap. But the other half of the problem is, and I know I'm probably going to tick some people off that I'm very, very good friends with, is, is that the purists need to calm down. What do you mean, the, Dave? The open or nothing, the not, you know, I don't like DRM any more than the next guy. But being so anti anything that's not a hundred percent open or you you're you're shooting yourself in the foot in order on uh, I, I i don't the ideology i get i i really truly get the ideology but when you're trying to convert a market share of people who don't understand the ideology screaming at them is not going to work. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not going to get someone to come to your church by walking up to them with a mallet with the, Bi the, the, the Bible written on it and smashing them in the face. And, that's, and then telling them if they can't handle it, they can go away. That, that's very counterproductive to what you're trying to accomplish. And that's why, as much as a Google fanboy as I am, I don't, I don't try and convert people because I just... I sh I sh my, I do show off the things that I can do, like yeah. being able to adjust my thermostat at work with my watch, and being like, yeah. "It's a little too cold. Let's make it two degrees warmer," and all of a sudden it's two degrees warmer, and all of that was powered by Android. I'm like, yeah, works for me. It's 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 really nice. It's it's kind of awesome that way, and you know until. Until those few things change, which they also will never change. Mm -hmm. But this is why Linux will ne it will never be the year of the desktop for Linux, in, in my opinion. Unless something massively happens to Windows, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. But that isn't to say that Linux, you guys won. Yeah, congratulations. I and I think I think the desktop issue is it's. It's going to be a non-issue before Linux ever has a chance to get that. Like, yeah. you, you know what I and, use ninety percent of the time. And you know what, Linux is already winning this, that run. Oh yeah. yeah, I use everything. This is this is it. This is what I use mostly. And when I'm not using that, unless I'm playing a game or I'm doing edit, video, you know, video edits and stuff, I use my Chromebook and. Oh, thanks to Google, or, uh, Google Remote Desktop, I can actually do all of my video edits almost in complete real time. Anywhere. On my Chromebook. Yeah. But that's all the time we have for this week. Catch us in the post show. That will be out Wednesday. Brian? Along with four of them. You have a good weekend.